Amen. Praise the Lord. So in your Bibles, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8, it says this. It says, See, I've given you this land. Go and take possession of the land the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants after them, praise God. So see, church, we're called to, to possess, not visit the promise that God has for us, praise the Lord. And so my thoughts this morning, church, is possessing your promise, praise God. But the question is, church, how do we position ourselves to possess what God has given us, what he has for us, church? And so during the Gulf War, we sent a bunch of our warplanes over to bomb the enemy. And we bombed them, and we bombed them, and it was called shock and awe. But I found out there's another place, church, uh, that experienced a shock and awe. And I found it in Exodus 19 and uh, uh, 16. And the Bible says here on Mount Sinai, there was lightning, there was thunder, there was smoke and fire. There were even these trumpet blasts, you know, because God's presence, church, was on this place. It was the the original shock and awe, praise God. And in fact, so so much so that the people were terrified and they wanted uh, uh, Moses to speak to them and not God, praise God. And so Mount Sinai was this place where, where God met with Moses. It was also called Mount Horeb. And it was where the children of Israel, they experienced God and, and got some insight and some revelation of who God was. And it was where God revealed himself as Jehovah, praise the Lord. And so from this mountain church, they learned about God's character through the giving of the, of the Ten Commandments. And this was a landmark spiritually church for the nation of Israel. And here in Deuteronomy, God would speak to Moses, and then God, or Moses would turn around, and he'd speak the words to the people. And he says this in Deuteronomy 1 and 6. He says, The Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain, praise God. So God gives them some instructions. It's time to pack up the camp and move on. God is basically saying, telling them, church, the Israelites, to leave everything behind. They had to leave this place, church, of their greatest uh, spiritual experience, and they had to get out of their comfort zones, church, and their understanding to be able to reach the place of promise, of destiny that God had for their lives, praise the Lord. And I wonder how many people here today, church, are missing out on the place of purpose and destiny, praise God, and breakthrough that God has for your life because you refuse, church, to move out of your comfort zones when God says move, praise the Lord. See, because we get comfortable. <laughs> we, we like to be comfortable. We get, we get super comfortable. We come to church. We have our, our special little seats in the church. We have our, our Christian circle of friends, praise the Lord. We know right from wrong most of the time, you know, and, and we like come and we, we're, we're, we're okay. We're comfortable with just feeling the God bumps. But we're not willing to let go of our comfortable places, church, and let God stretch us and and move us out of our our comfort places and and our control, church, to be able to reach the high call of God that he has for our lives. And church, most all the time in your lives, if you want to reach what God has for your church, you got to be willing to let go of those old places of comfort and control, church, and step out and embrace your today and your tomorrow and complete faith that God is in control and that he will lead and guide and direct your steps. Praise the Lord. So let's take a look here at Abram. Genesis 12 says this. It says, now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. What a great section of scripture that is right there, church. God says to Abram, he says, get out of your country. In other words, get away from those things, church, that's made you be comfortable where you're at, those things that you allowed in your life that keeps you in a place of comfort because I want to move you somewhere. I got some greater things for you. I got some bigger blessings in your life, but it's going to take you getting out of your comfort zone and moving to the place that I have for you, praise God. And Abram Church, he could have said like a lot of Christians do. Why, Lord? It's comfortable here. I have a job. I have a family. I have a house. The the climate's good. There's no resistance here. But no, church, Abram said here in verse 4, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. He didn't give any excuses, church, and he he went ahead and he obeyed the Lord. And one thing I've really noticed since I've been pastor church is how people love to make excuses to stay in their comfort zones, praise God. They really like to justify their reasoning for for not stepping out and, and doing what God has called them to do. 
But church, notice here what obeying and stepping out of your comfort zone will do for you, praise the Lord. Verse 2 says, God says, I will bless you. Not me. But he says, I will bless you. There's a blessing for those who will step out of their comfort zone, church, and trust God and obey and move, praise God. God's saying, I'm going to bless you, church. It opens up doors of blessing in your life when you begin to obey God and, and when he says, move, move, praise God. Because God doesn't like his people to get comfortable very long. Because when we get comfortable, church, we begin to get lazy. We begin to lose our fire and our passion for the Lord. And what it does, it opens up doors. You become vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy, praise God. God never calls his people to a place of comfort, but a place of servitude, praise God. I have this recliner at my house. And me and my wife, we call it the double butt seat. <laughs> it's really a two-seater, but it'd fit, you know, tip pretty large people, praise the Lord. But anyway, I'll sit in there with all three of my puppies. And it's really comfortable, man. I sit in there and I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go to the bathroom. I don't want to refill my tea. I just want to sit there and most of the time go to sleep, praise the Lord. And spiritually, church, that's the way a lot of Christians are sitting in the church. You would think that a lot of our seats are like lazy boy recliners, man, because it's hard to get anybody to move or do anything, praise the Lord. But God says, if, if you will get up, if you'll get out of your comfort zones and obey my voice, church, he's saying, I'll bless you. And not only will I bless you, church, he goes, I'll make you a blessing, praise God. I'll make you a blessing. Verse 2 says, you will be a blessing. God will use you. He'll use your gifts. He'll use your talents. He'll use your hands and your feet, church, the blessed people around you, praise God. Look, you may have believed the lies of the devil for a long time, that you're no good, that you're worthless, that you'll never mount to anything, that you're just a waste of space sucking up good air, but the devil is a liar. I'm here to tell you, God said, I will bless you. I will make you a blessing. So stop listening to the lies of the enemy and start believing the report of the Lord. He says, I'll bless you. I'll bless you. You're going in. You're coming out. I'll even cause your enemies to be at peace with you. You're a blessing this morning. Turn to your neighbor and tell you, I'm, I'm a blessing, praise God. <laughs> if you're married, tell your spouse, you scored, man. You married me. I'm, I'm a blessing, praise God. <laughs> She's like, yeah, right, but you can't argue with the Bible. The Bible says, I'm a blessing, man, whether you think so or not, praise the Lord. You be quiet over there, praise the Lord. My wife's, my wife's giving me the looks, praise the Lord. <laughs> and then church, God goes on to say here in verse 3, if you obey and if you'll get out of your comfy place, I will bless those who bless you. <laughs> And curse those who curse you, church. What a statement by God. He will bless those who blesses you, and he blesses me, praise God. So a few weeks back, I was uh, doing a brake change on my truck. And I got all the brakes changed, and I was proud of myself, praise the Lord. Watch the YouTube videos, how to do it. So I began to come to the church, <laughs> and my truck began to make this squeal, this, this howling, and have you ever pulled up at a stoplight and the person that's next to your car was just making all kinds of sounds and you were just embarrassed for them, praise the Lord, you know what I mean? Well, that was your pastor. My church, my, my truck, it screamed all the way here to the church and made all these weird noises, so I was thinking, you know, who can I call to help me out here? And so Brother Jose Hernandez came to mind and he came down and he blessed me. He took time away from his family and took me around to get some parts, and he fixed that. And so I, I was praying, Lord, just bless him and his family. Bless them good. But church, I didn't even have to pray that because the Bible says he will bless those who bless you, praise God. So with my prayers and with the Lord's word, he's going to get a double blessing, praise God, a double blessing. And then here at the end of last week, we were having fireworks, and uh, I was going to be tied up. So the person I was wanting to speak, he got real sick and couldn't speak. So I asked Brother White. To speak, if he would speak. And he said, yeah. And if you weren't here last week, church, you missed it because Brother White, he was on fire. He, he tore it up, praise God. And so he's going to get a blessing, praise God, a double blessing. See, church, when you're willing to step out of your comfort zones, God will use you, church. He will bless you and he will bless others through you, praise God. <laughs> They'll get a double blessing. And then on the other hand, church, you better be careful how you talk about other people. Because he says here, he goes, I will curse those who curse you. And that same thing applies to the words that come out of your mouth towards other people. Just because someone else's Christian walk might not line up the way you think it should line up, or maybe they're struggling in an issue or an area of their life, doesn't give you the right to chew them up or spit them out with the words that come out of your mouth, praise the Lord. So uh, you better be careful. You need to speak blessings because the words you speak, church, if they're not right words, might come back to haunt you, praise God. When you see something you don't understand or someone doing you might not think's right, 
Instead of casting judgment, you need to pray for that individual. You need to pray God to give some light in that situation because of the words you speak just might come back, church, and bring judgment to you. So we've got to be careful of our words, praise God. So you've got to get out of that easy chair, church, if you want to possess what God's got for you, church. Stop holding on to yesterday's blessings, yesterday's victories, church, and, and yesterday's experiences, praise God, because God wants to bless you today. So you can inherit and, and walk into the promise he has for you, church. So these Israelites, they circled around this Mount Sinai for like some 40 years. And now they were getting ready to leave this mountain and advance into the uh, uncharted territory, the unfamiliar, maybe the not so comfortable. Because God didn't want them just to visit or see their, their destiny or their promised church, but he wanted them to, to possess it, praise God. And you'll never possess your promise that God has for you if you're a lazy person, church. And that's one of the reasons that churches and Christians aren't seeing the miracles and changes like the early church, because we want comfort over change, praise God. See, reading, fasting, praying, uh, you know, being obedient to God's voice, doing the, uh, the uh, things of the word, praise God, requires work, church, a change in your lifestyle, moving out of your comfort zones. And God tells them here in verse 21 to go and take to go and take possession of the land that I've given them. In other words, he's saying, move. Don't sit there and just look at it, but move. Take possession of what I've given you, praise God. And see, church, you've got to be willing to come out of your comfort zones. You can't just wish for things to change in your life and just sit there, church. A move on your uh, uh, part is required if you want to possess what God has for you, church. Praise the Lord. You can't reach your, your promise, church, by getting comfortable. Destiny and taking ground, church, it doesn't come to the person who sits on their hands. And I believe it's time, church, for us to get away from our camp, get away from our mountain. You've circled around your past victories and your present level of, of understanding and knowledge in God long enough, church. It's time to move on to deeper waters that God has for you, church, so you can inherit, that you can walk the promise that he has for you. See, too many Christians are content at staying at the camp and reliving the experiences they had in the years past, praise the Lord. And without a doubt, church, it's more comfortable to walk down a path that you've already been down. You know, all you got to do is just follow the tracks you've laid years, you know, uh, year after year, praise God. The same trails, the same circle, the same path. But I believe God wants us to move on, church, into deeper water. And it means we got to pack up our stuff and move out, praise God. <laughs> move into those things that God has for us, praise God. He wants you to move forward and possess your land. And you can't get there, church, until you get away from your comfort zones that you built for yourself. Because if you're not careful, your comfort zones will become a prison to you. And they will keep you from experiencing the freedom that God has for you, church. You've got to be willing to step out of your comfort zones and move, praise the Lord. So skipping forward, the children of Israel, they begin to move. God takes Moses and he buries him. And now Joshua becomes this newly appointed leader, praise God. In chapter 3, it says this. It says he mobilizes the people to cross the Jordan. So they're going to go in a way they've never gone before. And it amaz it's amazing, church, that when you'll get ready, to, when you'll step out in faith and you'll trust God, church, and get out of your comfort zone, how God shows up. And the Bible says in verse 16 that the waters of the Jordan, they parted, praise the Lord, and the children of Israel, they crossed over on dry land. Praise God. So now the people of Israel, church, they're, cro they're closing in on their promise, on this destiny, praise God. They're getting ready to, to take possession of their promise. So what does it take to possess your promise this morning, church? And I'm not talking about physical land like the children of Israel were getting ready to take, but I'm talking about you being able to live in, walk in, and experience the victory in your life in Christ, deliverance in your life from your hurts, your habits, your addictions, church, the power of God flowing in your life, the blessings of God, walking in his will, and his purpose for your life, not visiting it, church, but living in it, experiencing it, praise God. So possession, church, takes, number one, purity. Purity. And church, know that God's wanting to prepare you for what he's prepared for you, praise the Lord. He doesn't want you just to visit your promise and then after a few minutes have to leave, praise God. He wants you to be able to possess it, church. Own it, praise God. And so these Israelites are out in the desert. Now they're, they're camped there. They're, they get out of the desert. Now they're camped there in the promised land. And the Israelites, they were living and they were enjoying the provisions of the promise but Joshua realizes, church, that they're not sanctified. 
And so here in Joshua 5, God tells him to go and circumcise the children of Israel, the sons of Israel. And so circumcision, it symbolizes cleanliness and holiness, praise the Lord. And it was part of God's covenant with his people. And it symbolizes a putting away of the sin, of the disobedience to God, church, and now being obedient to God's law and his commandments. And see, many believers are enjoying uh, the benefits and the provisions of the promised church here in the church because they're writing on the backs of other of Christians, other believers, prayers and fasting and, and warfare, spiritual warfare, praise God, and work. They're in their camp. They're blessed church, but they haven't been purified, praise God. See, too many people are living unclean lives, living together outside of marriages, lusting and looking at uh, the flesh, the things of the flesh, playing with things that will destroy them. Too many are living unclean, unsanctified lives that aren't set apart to God. And you might say, well, how can you be in the camp and experience some blessings and be doing those things? Well, it's like this. People come to church and they experience the move of God. They feel his presence, his touch, uh, his anointing. But there's people, church, that spend time fasting and praying and seeking God for God to move in the middle of the church, praise God, to move on the church service on Sunday, that people will experience his touch, his anointing, his saving grace. I pray for the church on a regular basis. I pray for it on Sunday morning, and I know other people do. There's people that come to the altar that don't know God, that are in need of a touch, and we lay hands on them, we pray peace on their life, and they leave better than they came in, praise God, even with no change in their life. And there's some of you that are Christians today that have unsaved loved ones, that you pray for them, that God will shield them, keep the hand of the enemy away until they can come to the knowledge of the Lord. All those people, church, are, are receiving the benefits of brothers and sisters and people in the camp that have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that's praying for them, praise God. They receive those benefits, church. <laughs> So why do you think there's so many uh, hype chasers in the church and, and that chase uh, a worship and worship music and all that? So because people want the benefits of God, the benefits of the camp, the God bumps, church, the, uh, the touch of the spirit, to feel the spirit, but they don't want to change the way they live their lives, church. They want the benefit off of someone else's work. See, you can visit your promised land without being holy, church, but you can't stay there until there's change in your life. And that's why people can come to church, they can experience God, they can sing, they can shout, they can hear the word, they can be touched by God, they can even feel the God bumps church because they don't follow through with their commitment. They can go back the very, the very same day that, or after the church service is over, after they experience all those things, and they can go right back to their hurts, their habits, their issues, all those things in their life, church, their addictions, because they don't follow through on that relationship with God. They don't maintain that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, because it's easier to obtain than it is to maintain, praise the Lord. It's easier to get a, a loan on a house, especially in the early 2000s, to buy a house than it was to maintain a house. See, because when the roof leaks... The, the bathroom messes up, or you have to repaint it. There's some maintenance you have to do on it, praise the Lord. It's, it's a little tough, and if you don't take care of the maintenance, it'll fall apart. You can come to church, and you can receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, but the maintenance starts, church, when you walk back out those doors. Are you going to have a prayer life? Are you going to read? Are you going to seek God? Are you going to fast and pray and do the disciplines of the faith to maintain that relationship, church? Because if you let that fall, you'll fall. You'll fall apart, praise God. See, church possession demands purity. Purity produces power in our life to possess what God has for us. And too many people may be content this morning, church, with just visiting your promised land. You're okay, church, with just maybe visiting the benefits, occasionally you know, visiting your destiny but you're unable to maintain it and hold possession of it, church, because of the lack of purity in your lives. Sleeping around outside of marriage, looking at things, church, you shouldn't be looking at, allowing garbage into your mind and into your homes will keep you from experiencing God's promise for your lives. And your talent may get you to the promised land, church, but it's your character that will enable you to stay there, praise God. There's people who can preach and sing all of heaven down, church, but they can't live the life outside the church. 
See, sanctification is almost a lost teaching now in the church world. You'll hardly ever hear any TV ministries or preachers talk about being set apart, being sanctified, being holy, even though God says, be holy. He says in Leviticus 11 and 44, For I am the Lord your God, and you therefore shall consecrate yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy, he's saying. Church, so you need to take some time and get some things out of your life and, and cleaned up and cleaned out of your life, praise God. Take a spiritual shower. If you have to, take a spiritual laxative, praise God, and just get all the mess cleaned out of your life, praise the Lord. Just make sure it's a spiritual laxative, praise the Lord, because I don't want no backup at the bathroom, praise God, this morning, praise the Lord. But get cleaned out. See, church, because you'll never be able to possess, church, your promise until you first allow God to purify your lives. It's time for you to be sanctified. It's time to live a sanctified life. It amazes me the people I talk to that call themselves Christians, church, but live in open sin like it's no big deal. And it is, church. Maybe, maybe the reason some of you maybe have a hard time pressing through or hearing God's voice or you don't feel close to God, maybe you need to take a self-inventory and ask God, Lord, show me, is there anything in my life that I'm doing that's displeasing to you? That's keeping your hand, your presence, your voice from speaking to me. First Thessalonians says this, 4 and 3, it says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passions of lust like the pagans who do not know God. And in this uh, uh, matter, no one should uh, wrong or take advantage of a brother or a sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins, as we told you and warned you before, for God did not call us to be unpure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. And I'm reminded the Bible tells us that we're the temple of the Holy Spirit, church. So we're to live a pure and clean life, praise God. See, the days of trying to live in the promised land church and stay as close to the, the, the ways of the world, the fence line of the world as possible, is over, church. You can't possess your, uh, your, your promise that God has for you without purity in your lives. So what does it take to possess your promise? Number two, healing. Healing. See, notice that right after they went through this uh, purification process, church, they didn't immediately jump and run and take the land. Joshua 5 and 8 says this. It says, So when they had finished circumcising the people, they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed. So the Bible's saying, church, they waited before they moved, praise God, they, until they were healed. They, it just doesn't say they, they just stayed in camp just to be staying in camp, but it specifically says they stayed in camp until they were healed or whole, praise God. And there's too many Christians, church, that want to jump out and do battle who's not whole in their life, church. They don't want to sit in a place of healing for a time and season. And I've seen people, church, fall down mess up in their walk, their relationship with God, and want to jump right back up and get right back into the battle. Get right back up front, church, without they taking any time to, to pray and figure out what caused them to fall in the first place. So they're vulnerable, church, because they just want to jump right back in the fight and uh, like nothing happened with an open wound, praise the Lord. And see, church, you have to learn to stay in a place until you become healed and whole because it doesn't do you any good or God any good to jump right back in the battle when you got a wound and you turn around and trip and fall down again, church. It doesn't do you any good because you didn't take the time to stop and get healed of what caused you to fall down the first time. See, too often people want to force their way back up front force their way back into ministry, force their way into leadership when you really just need to stay in a place and learn to heal, spend some time with God, church, and allow God to purify and heal you, praise the Lord. And this happens a lot of time in ministry with people because a lot of times in ministry with people in ministry, they identify their ministry with their identity. Their identity is their ministry. And it messes them up. Because their ministry is like their relationship with the Lord. And so they figure, if I'm not doing ministry, you know, I, I'm not in a relationship. But you're more to God than your ministry. Your ministry comes out of your relationship with God. If my relationship's not right vertical, it's not going to be right to you horizontal, praise God. 
And there's a lot of people that want to do ministry, church, that are messed up, they're not whole, and they need to spend time getting whole, church, because you'll never have a, a ministry that will be affected if this relationship's not right. Because it's out of this relationship births your ministry, praise God. And see, when people get up and they're not whole and they trip and they fall down, they get up and they trip and they fall down because they haven't taken time to be made whole, to be cleansed, to get those things right in their life. You don't do the people any good. You don't do God any good. And and you mess up your ministry. That's why I'll sit people down when they mess up church. And it's not because I want to be mean to them or mad at them, but I want to protect them. And I want to protect the ministry because if you're up and down and up and down, people will lose faith and confidence in you as a minister, as a leader, uh, whatever position you have in the church. You have to be able to live the life. Anybody can minister. Get up here and read a word. Anybody can sing a song, although it might not be on key, praise the Lord. But the question is that I always tell you guys, can you live the life outside the church? Some of you today, church, may be broken. Don't get in a hurry to get back to doing things for the Lord until you get a healing in your life. If you've been hurt, get healed. If you've been done wrong, get healed. If you've been addicted, get healed, praise God. See, not only does possession, church, call for holiness, but it calls for wholeness in your life. I remember Sister Liz telling me in CR, they would do a a step study for men and women. And a lot of times in the women's class, she said they would get to a point in this study where they had to do a self-inventory of their lives and the things in their life. And some people, when they would come to that point, some would face it and they were able to go on. And others would come to this point in their life and, and they would start digging around those old issues in their life, and it would boil up, and they couldn't stand it. It, it kind of ate them up because they weren't willing to deal with it or, or get through at church, and so they would quit the class. you got to be willing to deal with the things in your life, church, that keep you from being whole in the Lord if you want to possess what God has for your lives, praise God. You have to be healed before you can possess, church. So what does it take to possess your promise? Number three in the last one this morning is movement, church. Movement, praise God. I want you to notice that they stayed in camp, church, for a time of healing. But they didn't stay there forever, church. They didn't uh, rest there the rest of their lives, praise God. There came a day, church, when they had to pack up their stuff and move forward into what God had for their life. And I'm telling you this morning, church, it's time to get out of the tents where you've been camping and move forward into what God has for your life, church. It's time to get over your past and possess what God has for you in the future this morning, praise God. Some of you have been licking your wounds for way too long. Some of you, church, have been reliving your issues over and over again for way too long. And it's time to stop, church, crying and whining over what could have, what should have, what might have been, church. And it's time to move forward into what Jesus Christ has for you today. Praise God. And see, maybe some of you are using your hurts and your pain, church, as an excuse to keep from moving forward in your lives. And I'm not saying that your environment hasn't been tough, what you've gone through, what you've experienced in your life hasn't been difficult, praise God. But God changes our lives, church, by changing our understanding and our perspective, church, not our environment. A lot of times God will bless you and, 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 and give you what it takes to, to get through while leaving you in your environment, praise the Lord. So quit uh, waiting on the Lord to change your environment or your circumstances, church, but get up, get healed, praise God, change your perspective, and move into what God has for you, praise the Lord. Some of you have maybe been lying around your camp for, for way too long, and it's time for us to move forward as a body, as people, and receive what God has for us, church. The worship team wants to come on back up this morning. Samson was perhaps probably the strongest man ever, ever to live, praise God. He experienced the power of God. There was times in his life the power of God would come on him, church, and he just had great strength and great power, church. He knew what it was to visit the anointing. He knew what it was to experience God's power, church, And he knew what it was to move into the promise, but Samson couldn't possess it, church. He couldn't hold on to it because of his lust and lack of purity in his life. King Solomon had everything a a man could want, power, church, position, wealth, wisdom, 
but he could only visit church the promise. He couldn't, he couldn't possess it and he couldn't maintain it because of the lack of purity, church, and faithfulness to God. Matter of fact, it says here in Kings 11, For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart towards other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was his, the heart of his father David. See, church, you can have everything that comes with the promise. You can have the power, you can have the moves of the Spirit, the moves of God, the provisions, and not be able to possess it for yourselves. See, it's time to move into your promise, church. And the way we do that, church, is you've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to get sanctified, purified by the Lord. You've got to get healed from those things in your life. And then you've got to step forward and move, praise God. I'm going to have the prayer team come up this morning. And I want to pray with any need this morning, whether it be family, finances, marriage, we want to pray. But also, church, I wonder how many people here today are comfortable. You're comfortable coming to church. You got that seat. There's no urgency in your life to do anything for God. I would pray this morning, and my hope is that you would get an urgency for the things of God. Maybe you're here this morning, church, and you're still dealing with things in your life. you still got some issues in your life, some hang-ups, some hurts, some addictions, and God's wanting to sanctify you. He's wanting to purify you. And maybe you're here this morning, and you've been hurt. You've gone through some stuff in your life. You've experienced some things. And I'm telling you, God wants to wrap his arms around you this morning, church, and tell you that he loves you that it's going to be okay, and he'll walk with you every step of the way, praise the Lord, if you'll just come to him and let him heal you and make you whole. And maybe there's some of you this morning, church, that you've just been sitting in one spot for too long. You know God loves you. You know God's called you. you got the gifts and talents in your life, but you've just been sitting it's time to move out, church. Move forward into what God has for you, praise God. And so if that's you, I want, we want to pray with you this morning. These altars are open. I'm going to dismiss in prayer. But church, spend some time this morning. Lord, help me to receive what you have for me. Take hold of my promise. Praise the Lord. Father, I just thank you this morning for your spirit. Lord, I, I pray that these words would resonate in the lives of your people this week. That, Lord, you're calling us to get out of the camp, to get out of our comfort zones. Lord, dear God, that you could use us, that we can experience the promise that you have for our lives. That, Lord, you would sanctify our lives, make us whole. That, Lord, we would come to you and give you all the broken pieces of our lives, Lord, that we can experience your healing touch, Lord. That, Lord, we'd be willing to step out, Lord, and go, Father, Lord, and receive what you have for us. That we could be the church, Lord, in these last days that will be light in the dark, Father. Life would flow out of us, Father, into those that need life. There's so many people hurting in this life, Lord, and they need people to step up, Lord, and receive what you have for them. That we could be light in the dark. And Father, I just ask for your touch upon this church, upon this body. And Lord, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. These altars are open, church.